integrated graphic chip has come a long way, especially thanks to the appearance of the Ryzen G series of processor with the Ryzen 5 3400G as well as the Ryzen 7 5700G, giving us quite good gaming performance even on an integrated graphic chip. But now, with the release of the new Ryzen 7000 series of processor, they too will be getting the integrated graphic chip treatment even on their X series of processors. But how does it actually stack up against today's game? Well, let's find out. Okay. Hello everybody, I'm Han. We are Studio Azio. Now, you might be asking, why would anyone get the new Ryzen 7000 series of processor but use its integrated graphic and not get a dedicated graphic card alongside it? Well, say you're a gamer who wants to build a rig with the new Ryzen 7000 series of processor but want to wait for the new NVIDIA RTX 40 series to be fully released first or even AMD's upcoming Radeon RDNA 3 graphic card to be released first before making their first move. Therefore, you can use the integrated graphic chip from this CPU while waiting for those. Now, other than that, this also opens up a lot more options for SFX builds actually, since if you're opting for a low profile, very small PC build, and you don't want a bulky GPU, and you might only want it as an office PC or even a home media PC, and don't really need something very powerful for the graphic, then having the integrated graphic here will certainly come in handy. Now before jumping into the benchmark, let's talk a bit about the specification of the integrated graphic that is in the Ryzen 5 7600X, which we'll be using for the test. Now for the specification, the Ryzen 5 7600X integrated graphic will be using the RDNA2 technology, similar to the Radeon RX 6000 series of graphic card, and it will have two compute units inside it. Now the integrated graphic will be able to turbo boost up to 2.2 GHz and its VRAM will be mainly dependent on how much RAM you allocate to it as it will be using your system RAM. So from our testing, it seems to be using about 6 gigs of VRAM since we let it on auto but of course you can always adjust this around in your system BIOS depending on how much you want or need. Now for our benchmark, let's start with eSports game as generally they are lighter and easier to run as well. Now the aim for this test for us is to try to hit 60 FPS on this eSports title as generally for eSports game, they will be competitive game. So you'll be using it to compete with other players. So frame rate does matter. And for our test as well, we're trying to aim for hitting 60 FPS while retaining as much picture clarity as possible. So a nice balance of FPS as well as graphic quality. So, here's our test configuration. First eSports title we have is Apex Legends. And unfortunately, with 1080p, the game won't really run in a smooth enough FPS to be considered playable. However, at 720p, at the lower setting, it's certainly playable. Although, it won't really hit 60 FPS still, even at 720p with the lower setting. Welcome as to we Apex Legends. Then we have Dota 2, which although it also runs on the Source engine like Apex Legends, the game is a lot lighter with us able to achieve <laughs> above 60 FPS at 1080p very easily at medium setting, which is the second from the lower setting, making it very playable while looking quite good as well. CSGO is our next game, and although being an older game, it actually doesn't really run as well as Dota 2, which is newer. Now, hitting 60 FPS average at 1080p high is not very difficult. However, we did notice a huge frame drop if a smoke grenade was used during the benchmark. So, that's something to take note for CSGO players if you're planning to game on the Ryzen 7000 series of integrated graphics. Now, next is FIFA 2022, which isn't a very demanding game as well. Adjusting the graphic settings to medium with 4x MSAA anti-aliasing will allow us to easily run the game at an average of 60 FPS at 1080p. The next shooter we have on our list will be Valorant. And good news to any Valorant players, achieving more than 100 plus FPS is easily doable at this game, even at the highest setting of 1080p for this game. 
Now, Rocket League was a popular esports game a few years back, but it still has a healthy player base around, so we tested that game as well. And for achieving 60 FPS average at 1080p, the graphic setting will need to be tuned to performance mode. But with this setting, it will be very playable while still looking quite good as well. And finally, we tested Genshin Impact. And for Genshin Impact, we are unsure whether to put it in the esports game category or in the AAA game category. So I'll just give it a mention here and try to hit 60 FPS as well for this game. Now Genshin Impact was surprisingly quite tough to run without a graphic card as in order to achieve the 60 FPS mark for this game, it had to be run at the lowest setting. And, and even with that, some frame dips and drops are to be expected. Next up, we'll be going through some AAA games as we want to see if the integrated graphic chip of the Ryzen 5 7600X is capable of playing the AAA games even at low settings will be considered good already. And what we'll be trying to aim with these AAA games will be slightly different from eSports games as we'll be trying to hit 30 FPS instead of 60 FPS as AAA game doesn't really require as high FPS as you're not being competitive. So let's go. So the first AAA games we tested was Forza Horizon 5 and hitting 30 FPS similar to a console experience will be possible at 1080p. However, the quality settings will need to be adjusted to the lowest possible. But I would say this is still quite playable. A Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in order to achieve a playable frame rate, the resolution will have to be downscaled to 720p with the lowest graphic settings as well. However, by changing these, you will be hitting frame rates of around 40 plus FPS with 1% low of above 30 FPS. So it will certainly be quite playable with this. And for the final AAA game we tested, it will be GTA 5, which is an older AAA game, a game from 2014. So it should be easier to run compared to the two AAA games just now. And well, yes, it is. With a mix of medium and high settings, you'll be able to hit 30 FPS at 1080p. And if you don't mind tuning down the graphic settings a bit further, then higher FPS will certainly be possible. So that was the benchmark result of the Ryzen 7000 series of processor, mainly the 7600X. Certainly quite a powerful integrated graphic as well, actually. And having an integrated graphic is always nice to have as if you have something happen to your graphic card and you need to troubleshoot your computer, you can always rely on integrated graphic as well as maybe there's something happened to your graphic card and you need to send it for repairs or perhaps warranty services. Then having an integrated graphic card at least ensures that you'll be able to use your computer in the meantime while waiting for its repairs. Now. What do you think of the new Ryzen 7000 series of integrated graphic chip? Will you be picking up the new Ryzen 7000 series of processors? Do remember to like and share this video to all your friends and family. And remember to subscribe and follow us on our respective social media as well. That's all from us today. Stay safe and goodbye. Mine. <laughs>